Yes, dear viewers, we'll be back from the break. The break has now taken us to example two of the examination type questions. The examiner, just like example one, is telling us to show that x power 3 over 2 plus xy over xy minus y cubed minus root of x over root of x minus y is the same as root of x over y. You have already got a clue on this word show. When they tell you to show, automatically it is the left hand side, which should be left to, I mean dealt with, to produce the right hand side, the right hand side. So in this kind of arrangement, I'm seeing a change can be made. So we can go and say, Mr. Examiner sir, this is our solu solution. The left hand side is now going to be x power 3 over 2, then plus our xy, then all over xy minus y cubed minus root of x over root of x minus y. This is the left hand side, the left hand side. However, I'm seeing what I need to prove out is in terms of a square root. Can't we express x power 3 over 2 in terms of a root sign? In terms of a sign? Is it possible? Let us go and check how old is our math, the maturity of our mathematics. So x power 3 over 2 is the same as, okay, this can be the same as x, okay, uh, cubed, then power a half. We saw this from the laws of indices. Power, power will multiply to come back to this. However, this is the same as the square root of x cubed. Hey, this is true because power half is square root. But x cubed is the same as saying square root of x times square root of x squared. Or square root of x squared times square root of x. From the laws of indices, this is correct. Yes, it is correct. Oh, have you seen the maturity of math? Okay, so this is the same as saying square root, okay, of x squared times square root of x. Yes, we redistribute the square root. But square root of x squared is the same as x times root of x. Meaning that where we have x power 3 halves, we can bring it in the form of x root of x. Let us first go and cause that chain. So, dear examiner sir, this now becomes x root of x plus xy, okay, over xy minus y cubed minus the root of x over root of x minus y. What you are supposed to focus at is a current step. How do you cause a correct change on an existing step? Only that. The answer will come out on its own. So any change can you cause here? Okay, I can get the common denominator, common denominator. So the common denominator will be obtained by multiplying the existing denominator, denominator. So we shall have xy minus y cubed, okay, into root of x minus y. We get the whole common denominator, divided through by the first denominator. This will give the second denominator, okay, which is a root of x minus y, then times the existing numerator, which is x root of x plus x y y minus, okay, the new denominator divided by the second denominator, we shall get the first denominator. So we are having a root of x into the first denominator xy minus y cubed y cubed so long as this step is correct don't worry about the answer the answer will come out on its own dear viewers let us now change our position we go to the next space okay so in this kind of arrangement we shall come and say the left hand side mr examiner sir, is equal to by simplification now we are going to multiply root of x by x root x. So root x root x will give us x squared, which is x times x, which is x squared, squared. So we are having x squared here. Okay. Now, let us proceed. We are having a root of x 
times x y. What does it give us? X y root x. Okay, and it is a positive. Okay, so plus x y root of x. Okay, then we can proceed. Okay, uh huh. The root. Oh, we are done with the root root. Remember, this is in brackets. We are done with that. Let us go to a negative y. Negative y times x root x. We shall get a minus x y root x. Okay. Minus x y root of x. Hope people have observed that. This and that. We are getting a minus, okay, x y root of x. Very interesting. Let us proceed slowly by slowly, dear viewers. Okay. Aha, aha, aha. Then, if we proceed, we are seeing a negative y, okay, times x y, which will give us a negative x y squared. Okay. Minus x y squared. Very interesting. Let us proceed. Okay. I'm seeing, I'm hearing some sound. Yeah? Yes, somebody who's making the sound is confusing me. Okay, a negative root x times xy. What do we get? We are getting a negative xy root of x. We can put it here. Minus xy root of x. And then lastly, a minus root of x times cube root of y or y power 3. Not cube root, this is y cubed. Okay, or y power 3. So this is a plus y cubed x root of x. So plus y cubed root of, okay, root of x. Hope you can see that. Then all of this over. Okay. We can proceed. The denominator, we can also expand it. So when you expand the denominator, xy times root of x, what do we get? We get xy root of x. Okay. xy root of x. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. xy times negative y. What do we get? We get a negative y squared x okay minus y squared x okay let us proceed a negative y cubed times root of x what do we get a negative y cubed root x so minus y cubed root of x very interesting then lastly negative negative will give us a positive y cubed and y will give us the y power 4. So, a plus y power 4. And that's how far we have reached now. Yes. However much a particular expression becomes long, however lengthy it becomes, be consistent. Make sure that the changes we have caused are correct changes. So, let us proceed. How can we simplify the numerator? I'm seeing some simplification in the numerator. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing this cancelling out with that. Okay. And if it cancels, this is what we are going to remain with. We are going to remain with x squared. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh, minus xy squared. Then minus xy root of x. Then plus y cubed root of x. Hope you have also seen that. Then all over. In the denominator, there is nothing we can simplify. But we shall get xy, okay, root of x minus, okay, xy squared. I'm rearranging this, okay. Then minus, okay, y cubed, okay, root of x then finally plus y power 4 very interesting but remember i want to reach here let me be tempted to factorize out root x in the numerator people are asking me how can you factorize out root x 
in the numerator? Yes, it is possible. Let us go and see. If we say factorize out root x from the numerator, what do we obtain? This is root x. Root x. Okay, which number will multiply? Okay, will be multiplied by root x such that we get x squared. Which number is that? Oh, that is x. I can put x, okay, root of x. Yes, because root x times root x is x. x times x, x squared. Very interesting. The math is very enjoyable. So, minus, what about here? Which number can we multiply with root x to get x y squared? Oh, that number can be, okay, the root, okay, of x. Then, oh, we can say y squared root of x. Very interesting. Why y squared root of x? When I multiply root x by root x, I will get x. x times y squared, I will have a minus xy squared squared. Very interesting. You are making correct factorization. This is an advanced level. We expect you to amplify your reasoning. Okay. So let us go to the last one. Let me plus. If the root x is out from here. Oh, where are we? We are here. Okay. If the root x is out, what do we remain with? We remain with a negative x, y. Good. Very interesting. Then what about the last one? The last element will become a plus, root x is out, we shall get a y cubed. Okay, very interesting. We can change our ink such that it is not faint. Okay, so that's where we are. Let us go to the denominator. In the denominator, since I want to reach this, let me be tempted to factorize out y. So y come out. And see whether we get something like that. I try to rearrange. Okay. So when y is out from here, we shall get x root of x. Okay. Very interesting. Uh huh. Minus, because the minus will remain. Y is out. What do I remain with? I remain with x y minus one y is out. What do I remain with? I remain with y squared root of x. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. in the denominator, from y power 4, 1y is out. What do we remain with? y power 3. Very interesting. Let me try to rearrange the denominator such that it conforms to the denominator, I mean to the numerator. So our left hand side will now become over, okay, into x, root of x, minus y squared, root of x, minus xy, plus y cubed. So the denominator is almost the same as the numerator. The difference is by root x and y. How? Let us rearrange and you see. x root of x, okay? I'm going to bring this, which is a minus y squared root of x. Then I'll bring this, a minus xy, then plus y Cubed. Very interesting. So this implies that the brackets are the same. We can divide to get one. Very interesting. So therefore, the left hand side, Mr. Examiner, sir, is the same as the root of x over y, which was the same as the right hand side you gave us as required. I told you a small box that is a square with a dot centered in the middle. Mathematically, it is a symbol for the end of a proof. Or, yes, after showing something. So, as required by the, exa the examiner. So, that one becomes our answer. Try as much to be orderly. Try as much to be orderly. Let the cosines flow in the same order. Be consistent. Always your energy should be on an existing step while putting in the reasoning of man. The answer will come out on its own. What you need is getting a clear posture of the teacher, pause the teacher, and then write down what is on the board. So immediately after the break, I'm coming back with the next examination questions.
dear viewers, we'll be back from the break, okay? Um, we are now going to example three. Example three. So example three, okay, among the examination type questions, a very interesting one. It's just now application of the knowledge of size. Can you apply what you have learned? So given that t is equal to a half brackets root five plus one, okay? show that t squared is equal to 1 plus t. So when they tell us to show that, it will not always be that we start from the left hand side. Oh, sometimes we need to start from a given expression, as we are going to see here. So we shall come and say, Mr. Examiner, sir, this is the solution. So in our solution, you have given us t is equal to a half into root of 5 plus 1 plus 1. Okay. I can cause some changes here. Yes, if we multiply through by 2, we shall get uh, a 2t is equal to, okay, root of 5 plus 1. Okay, I can baptize this as my equation, star 1. I've caused a change. Okay, let me try to make root 5 from equation star 1. So, from equation star 1, okay, if I make root 5 the subject of the formula, I will have root 5 equivalent to 2t minus 1. I'm going to substitute, I mean, to baptize this as equation star 2. You can call it equation A, or you can call it equation B, any equation of your choice. Still from, or I will come and say, equation, because the examiner is talking of t squared, I can go and square this. Equation star 1 squared, okay, is going to give me a 2t bracket squared, which is now equivalent to a root of 5 plus 1 bracket squared. Remember, root is only on 5 squared. Very interesting. Let us go and expand this and then try to see where it pushes us. So it is giving us a 4t squared, which is equivalent to root of 5 plus 1 okay into root of 5 plus 1 very good so such an algebraic expression expanding it is going to give you okay uh, a root of 5 bracket squared plus 2 okay into 1 into root of 5 then plus 1 squared I've used algebraic expansion Okay, let us proceed slowly by slowly. This will now give us a 4t squared, which is equivalent to 5 plus 1, which gives you a 6. A six. So this is a 6, then plus 2, root 5. Very interesting. I can reduce this by 2, okay, such that I have a 2t squared, which is equivalent to a 3 plus a root of 5. Okay, but if we make this one equation, maybe star 3, this is equation star 3, I can substitute equation star 2 into equation star 3. Where there is root 5, I will put 2t minus 1, such that I eliminate root 5, root 5, because I'm not seeing any side in my proof, the expression of the proof. Okay. So, what am I going to do? I'll talk to the examiner, Mr. Examiner, sir. Equation star 2, okay, into equation star 3. Very interesting. So, this implies that our 2t squared will now become a 3 plus root of 5 is the subject of the formula in equation star 2. So, which is equivalent to a 2t minus 1. Very interesting. Try to correct like terms and simplify. So long as you are doing the correct math, you should have those guts to continue. A correct answer will come from correct changes. And correct changes do come from a current step. So all the eyes should be on an existing step. An existing step. Once the existing step is wrong, you will not proceed with correct steps. Exactly, that is the method of solving math. And apply what we call the best 
or the laws and the principles governing that particular topic. So in this kind of arrangement, this is what we are going to get. We are now getting a 2t squared equivalent to, okay, 2 plus 2t. Okay, I'm seeing a common factor. We can divide through by 2. When we divide through by 2, dear viewers, we are just getting to the answer. 1 plus t, exactly as the examiner needed it, as required. Very simple work. Get my clear posture, remove this work, put it in your books. You, that DVD might crash tomorrow, okay, when you are missing this work. So immediately after break, I'm coming back with more and more examples about the examination time questions. Don't go away, stay tuned. You're welcome now to number four, examination type questions. Okay, now, this always gives challenges to students. But what you need to do here, if square roots are appearing on one side of a particular linear equation like this, try all means to first dissociate these square roots. Okay, such that you have one side in the square root and the other side in the square root. Then you go on squaring, 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 up to when you remove the root sub, the root sign, which is regarded to be a side. So in this kind of arrangement, the examiner is telling us to solve. So I'll come and say, Mr. Examiner, sir, this is my solu solution. So in my solution, I'll try to disorganize the equation of the examiner such that if I have two... Okay, I first bring the real expression, that is x plus 4, is equal to 1. Then I'll take this the other side, such that I have 2 root of x minus 1 is equal to 1 plus, it will now become a plus, the whole of this. Okay, very simple, uh -huh. root of x plus 4, very, very simple. Then, from that kind of arrangement, we can go. I've told you the trick here is by squaring, squaring both the sides. Okay. If you square this left-hand side, it was going to be a little bit complex for you. But after dissociating the root, taking them to the right-hand side, then at least we are seeing some simplification. So, as a student, you should now develop that maturity in simplification, simplifying, okay? There is no law of sad so far, no rule of sad so far, but just the simple mathematics, okay? So, squaring both sides, talk to the examiner, Mr. Examiner, sir, squaring, okay, both, both the sides of the equa equation. Where is my marker? Oh, these markers have started this time, we are getting finished, okay? Okay, so we are having a 2 root of x minus 1, okay, is equal to 1 plus the root of x plus 4. So square this side, square this side. What you introduce on the left hand side, you should also introduce on the right hand side. Very interesting. So in this kind of arrangement, we are going to see that our expression now becomes, if we square this, it is going to be a 4 into x minus 1, which is equal to, okay, what about this? This is going to be 1 plus the root of x plus 4, okay, then into 1 plus the root of x plus 4, okay. So, from our algebraic expansions, we can expand this without even going into individual expansions of these elements. How are we going to do that? Let us shift and go the other side. We shall go and say, here, examiner sir, this now becomes a 4x minus 4. I've expanded, okay, the left-hand side. Then what about this? This will become, 
a 1 squared, which is 1, then plus 2 into 1 into this, which becomes 2 root of uh, x plus plus 4. Okay, then plus, it is a plus. Okay, x plus 4 squared, root of x plus 4 squared, which brings out x plus plus 4. Very interesting. Try to simplify. When I simplify, I'm seeing a 4x minus 4 now becoming, try to bring this closer, such that we have, okay, um, x, then plus a 5, then plus a 2, root of x plus 4. Very interesting. I can remain with this root and take the rest of this side. So when x comes to the left hand side, becomes a negative, it reduces a 4x to 3x, okay? When a positive 5 comes to a negative 5, it increases this negative, okay? Does it increase it in magnitude, but in each of the actual value, it reduces it. So negative 7 is equal to, is it negative 7? No, that is wrong math. It is a negative 9 because 5 this side becomes a negative 5 plus a negative 4. It is a negative 9, a negative 9. So if that is true, then we can equate it to 2, the root of x plus 4. Okay. So let us do the same thing. To remove the square root, we square both sides. So squaring both sides. So squaring both sides of the equation. So what are we going to get? 3x minus 9, bracket squared, is going to be 2, the root of x plus 4, also squared. Then try to simplify. Okay, so this will now become a 3x, okay, bracket squared, minus a 2 into 3x into a 9, then plus a 9 squared is now going to be a 4 into x plus 4. We have now got rid of our root sign. The root sign is no longer existing, meaning that the rest of the equation can be solved amicably. Very interesting. So when we simplify this, we shall get a 9x squared, then minus 2 times um, 3, that is 6, 6 times 8, or we can multiply uh, 2 times uh, uh, times 9, that is 18, 18, so 18 times 3, that is 36 plus 18, that is 50, 54, so minus 54x, then plus 81 is equal to 4x plus 16. Now it is running to a quadratic expression, a quadratic expression, which quadratic expression we can simplify very well. So can we rearrange by use of a calculator? It's going to be of help. So let us bring it nearby. Okay. Now we are going to see that this implies that we have a 9x squared. A 4x comes this side becomes a negative. So minus 58x. Okay. Then a 16 comes this side becomes a negative. So we shall have 81 minus 16, which is a 65. So plus a 65. 16 reduces 81, which is equal to z, is equal to 0. You will accept that this cannot be factorized with common factors, but we need to apply a quadratic for formula. So tell the examiner, compare from ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 over 2a. So substitute the values of a, b, and c. Linear coefficient. Okay. So looking at the values of a, a is going to be 9, b is going to be negative 58, and then c is going to be 65, which is a positive. Substitute. So when you substitute, we shall get negative, okay, into negative 58, which will give you a plus. So plus or minus the square root, okay, square root of b squared 
which is negative 58 bracket squared minus 4 into the value of a, which is a 9. Then into the value of c, which is a 65, a 65. All over, the whole of it is now going to be over, okay, over 2 into a, but the a was not was 9. So, dear viewers, what do you get? Get your calculators, compute this. So, on simplification, hope you have used your calculators and you are getting my answer. I'm getting x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 13 over, over 9. That is example 4. I believe this is enough for you. But maybe let me add you only one last example. Example 5 on the examination type questions. I want people to be now well versed with the examination for format. Immediately after example 5, we shall have our assignment. Try your numbers. You also try out on your own. So don't go away. I'm coming back.